Hey y'all, let's take a look very quickly at two different things today. And one of these is just called deductive reasoning. And we're not gonna spend a whole lot of time on it, but you'll get the, the, the method on how to do that. You should know the word syllogism. The syllogism, you see the root word of that is the same word that we have, we use the word logic. The Greek word logos means like word. And uh, it, it's the root of many different words in English. Um, you know, uh, And one of those, actually, if you read, um, the first chapter of John, it says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And of course, that's Jesus. Uh, he was in the beginning, and all things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. Anyhow, he's the, lo if you look up the Greek word, which you don't have to learn Greek to read the Bible, that's why God arranged to have it written in English. So, but the word logos, it's neat. He's the word, the word of God. It's awesome. So anyway, now let's look at the word syllogism. And this is a syllogism. We're not going to draw all these pictures, but the syllogism has three things. It has a major premise, it has a minor premise, and it has a conclusion. So let's take a look at this first. Major premise is this. All squares are rectangles. Okay, all squares are rectangles. Can you picture that? Okay, in other words, let's say you've got a big hunk of stuff here, all right? And these are... These are rectangles right here. Okay, and then you have a bunch of little, you have a bunch of shapes inside here. Okay, so and then you know, here's some, here's a shape that's a rectangle. Here's another shape that's a rectangle, and so on. All right, and these are all squares. That's a square. That's a square. That's a square. Pretend they're they look more like squares. All squares are rectangles. You go, okay, yeah, I see the picture, and that's true. Definitely, it's in that group of rectangles. The minor premise is be something like this. Quadrilateral A, B, C, D is a square, is a square. So we'll just call this, we'll have a, a square, and that'll be A, B, C, D, okay? What we could actually do is we could, we could make a little subgroup here and say, these are all the squares. All squares are rectangles. This is the group of squares I have in this big clump of rectangles. Everything else out he, outside of here is not a square, but if, as long as it's inside this big lump, it's also a rectangle as well. So if we say the quadrilateral ABCD is a square, that means it's in this little group where all the square is. So we can conclude then that quadrilateral ABCD is also a rectangle. And that's our conclusion. All right, let's try another one. Major premise, all poets are poor. All poets are poor. Another, okay, so we can have a picture, you know, draw it however you like. And this is... Let's call this all poor people. And let's say we have, uh, oh, I don't know. Uh, over here is 36 year old guys who sit in their mother's basement playing, you know, PlayStation all day. We'll, pull, we'll call those the PS guys. And let's say over here, here are the poets. Poets are poor, all right? Oops, that's not supposed to hang out. I'm gonna, that's important that I not let that hang out. So I'm gonna, that's gonna be out of there and there we go, there are all the poets. And then there's other people that are also poor, but they're not poets or PlayStation guys, okay? Roger is a poet. In other words, we could say, okay, there's Roger right there. Here he is inside the group of poets. So what can we conclude now about Roger? Roger's poor, right? Now that might not be exactly true, but I mean, all poets are poor might not be a true statement, but according to our syllogism, it does conclude that Roger is going to be poor. Okay, here's a third one. All math teachers are women. Okay, here's the picture. I'm not going to say that that's true or not. Okay, all math teachers are women. How will we draw this picture? If this, uh, all poets are poor, the big one is poor. All math teachers are women. How would we draw this? All math teachers are women. All math teachers are women. How would you draw it? Pause it and draw it. Okay, did you do it yet? Okay, let's say this is this is women. And of course, here are the groups, here are the math teachers, here are the, uh, let's say, uh, you know, the MMA art fighters. What else do women do? Oh, I don't know. NFL, offensive tackles, and so on. Okay, so all math teachers are women. The math teachers are in that group of women, all right? Clifford is a math teacher. So here's Clifford sitting right here. Or how about Cliffordina, since it's a woman, all right? The conclusion is that Clifford is a woman. Now, that's logically true. That's called valid. 
Is it true? No, because all math teachers are not women. I can think of at least one, maybe that isn't. Okay. Now here's another one. Let's just, uh, let's actually, we're not going to draw a picture of this. Let's just take a look at this logically. If somebody tells you, if it rains, I will go to town. If it rains, I will go to town. Think about that. All right. Now, if somebody, then they go, well, it did not rain. The conclusion, you might want to say, oh, then you didn't go to town. But that isn't necessarily true. You said, if it rained, I'll go to town. All right. But it didn't rain. But the thing is, you could still go to town even if it did not rain. So you can't necessarily conclude that the person did not go to town. All right. You don't have to write all these down. Just know that in chapter 30, uh, you will have these uh, written out for you. Euclid was a Greek philosopher, mathematician, who came up with a bunch of these, with, they're called axioms or postulates. And it, that is basically, you can see it's a self-evident mathematical truth. And there are a, a set of these that he's known for that I'm just gonna run through very quickly. You don't have to memorize them or anything like that. Just be aware of them, okay? Uh, a theorem is another type of, uh, that's a definition and a provable mathematical truth. The theorem has a little more of a scientific weight about it. But let's look at a bunch of postulates that Euclid came up with. Number one is two points determine a unique straight line. Two points determine a unique straight line. In other words, there's only one way the two points out there in the atmosphere, there's only one line that can go through exactly those two points. Second, a straight line extends indefinitely as far in either direction. That's why you see lines written like this because it, it assume they go indefinitely. Three, a circle may be drawn with any given center and any given radius. Four, all right angles are equal. They're all 90 degrees. Five, given a line N and a point P not on that line, there exists in the plane of P and N and through P one and only one uh, one and only line M which does not meet the given line N. In other words, it's a parallel line. Parallel lines will never meet. That's the postulate there. Six things equal to the same thing are equal to each other. That's an important one. We'll come up on a couple of times this year. Seven if equals be added to equals. The sums are equal. Well, we use that all the time when we solve equations. Eight, if equals be subtracted to equals, the remainders are equal. Same thing. Nine, figures which can be made to coincide are equal or congruent. And 10, the whole is greater than any part. Okay, so just be aware of those. There's no, no sense in memorizing all those or anything like that. Okay, all right. Well, let's look at a couple of very short proofs. Prove that the vertical angles below are equal. And what we're going to do is, well, you know what vertical angles are. Like if X is a vertical angle, 2P, all right? Prove that they're equal. Well, a very quick proof of this is that you can write an equation. You tell me, what is X plus Z equal to? The measure of the angle. X plus Z is equal to 180, right? Because it's a straight, a straight line, all right? So let's go ahead and do what is this? What is P plus Z equal to? is equal to 180 as well, right? Since those things are equal to 180, then they're equal to each other. So we can write an equation now that's x plus z is equal to p plus z. And like an equation, we can go, oh, okay, we can cross off the uh, z's on both sides, so we have an equation, x is equal to p, and there we go, all right? Let's look at something called corresponding interior and exterior angles. We've done this before, and I'm gonna make this very simple and short. Uh, these are the corresponding, you know, interior and exterior angles. When you have a transversal that cuts across parallel lines, you know what happens. This is equal to that, is equal to that. And the bottom left is equal to the bottom left and the bottom and so on. This uh, top left is equal to this. And since this is equal to that, and these are uh, vertical angles, then that means the, you know, let's say you have a, an angle S. Well, S we know is going to be equal to this S. And since this S is equal to this S, these two are equal because they're vertical angles, that means this interior angle is equal to that interior angle. And uh, we'll do more of these in a second. These are called alternate interior angles, like this one here and this one here. And those will be equal to each other. And you'll, we've already worked with these, so we've, we've dealt with them before. So, And the theorem is this. When parallel lines are cut by a transversal, the pairs of alternate interior angles are equal, which we just showed that. Since this here, top right, is equal to this, well, and also, and this is equal to that, because these are vertical angles here, 
That means this in alternate interior angle, there's an alternate interior angle to this alternate interior angle. Those are equal, so pretty much it. All right, another very quick proof is how to prove that there are 180 degrees in a triangle using alternate interior angles. Well, look at the drawing on the left, that's your triangle. Now, if you were to go ahead and extend two parallel lines, uh, you know, all the way through like this and through that bottom side of the triangle and make these and do transversals. What you could say is that, well, we know that A plus B plus C, well, since this is angle A here, which matches this one, the alternate interior angle will be the same exact value as A. It's congruent. And since this is C, this will be the exact same value as C as well. We know that A plus B plus C is equal to 180 degrees because it's a straight angle, right? It's a straight line. So if that A plus B plus C is equal to 180, well then it has the same B in it. It has the same congruent angle A and the same congruent angle C. So that proves that inside a triangle, the angle measure is a total of 180 degrees. So, okay, all right. Well, we have two of these and uh, go ahead and pause it and try A and see if it's uh, valid. All right, well, are the following arguments valid? Draw a Venn diagram. We, we did Venn diagrams. I didn't tell you what they were called, but that's kind of what they are. All dogs have three legs, okay? Well, all dogs have three legs, okay? We can call this, you know, three-legged animals. And then dogs are in there somewhere, okay? There's dogs. And over here are three-legged giraffes, which roam the Serengeti, or maybe Idaho. Not sure where they're from. Okay, it looks like a llama, doesn't it? Okay, that's more of a homeschool. Let's call this a llama. There's a three-legged llama right there. All right, all dogs have three legs. Henry is a dog, so we'll go, okay, well, Henry is in there. Therefore, Henry has three legs. Well, logically, that's a valid argument because Henry is inside that space in the diagram. But, you know, just because it's valid doesn't mean it's true. All dogs do not have three legs. Some have five. Okay. B, all scholars are poor. Let's try this one. Go ahead and draw this picture. All scholars are poor. Rita is poor. Therefore, Rita is a scholar. So go ahead and do that. Okay, well, here's the Venn diagram. All scholars are poor. Well, let's just make the, the whole group is everybody who's poor. Let's make this group over here scholars. And all scholars are poor, which means every single one of them fits into that group of poor persons. All right. And of course, we have, you know, there's your PlayStation, your, your PlayStation guys who waste their lives playing video games 18 hours a day. Okay. Rita is poor. Therefore, Rita is a scholar. Wait a minute. Does this prove since Rita is poor that Rita is a scholar? No, it doesn't, right? Because Rita could be over here. She could be over here, one of these people, poor persons who is not in the scholar group, okay? So just because all scholars are poor, Rita is poor, doesn't prove that Rita is a scholar. She could be one of those. So that is that is not a valid argument. So, okay. All right. Good luck on those. See you guys next time. Y'all have a great day. Take care.